Today we're talking with Jacqueline Otto, spokesperson for the National Rifle Association. And Jacqueline, I've been working on a series of articles called The Lawless Presidency. Uh, President Barack Obama makes has no shame when it comes to just circumventing the Constitution, circumventing the rule of law, and going around issues to, to accomplish what his liberal mindset wants to accomplish. Um, one of the key issues in this, and a very clear example of it, is Operation Fast and Furious. Uh, tell us a little bit of the background about Fast and Furious and, and what the NRA is doing in respect to that. Yeah, well, the NRA, our biggest objective right now is to just find the truth and make sure that justice is served to the people who deserve it most, like the family of, of murdered Border Patrol agent Brian Terry. And I know that you've been working on this and reporting about it almost since the day that it happened. Yeah, actually, um, I came out and wrote my very first story about this the day after Brian Terry was killed. I, I've been following border security issues for a long time. Um, it became very clear very early on that there was something wrong with, with what happened there. This wasn't just a, a Border Patrol agent that got killed. The government immediately went into cover-up mode. Uh, I was talking to people with the FBI and the ATF in Arizona. They wouldn't release any information. So we started really looking at why they were starting to cover up information. Uh, almost simultaneously, we had the shooting of the Congresswoman Giffords from Arizona. I could get information about everything on that. They would give me all kinds of information. But on this particular thing, they weren't giving any information at all, and the cover-up began. Senator Grassley started an investigation uh, and has done a great job with it. And finally, after about six months, the mainstream media picked up the story and uh, and has run with it. Now, what are you seeing in terms of what's happening with, with the Obama administration in, in coming forward with the information? Yeah, well, you use the right word, cover-up. This is a scandalous cover-up that, like, we haven't seen since Watergate. But where's the outrage? There's there's no, no one calling for resignations or you know, justice in, in the same way, and that's what we, we want people to be furious, and they need to get furious fast, and what what isn't here is there's no answers, there's no information, and there's no justice, and President Obama um, has interjected himself into the situation by exerting executive privilege over these documents that were lawfully subpoenaed by um, con the Congressional Oversight Committee. Um, and these documents that, that could give us answers, that could tell us what happened. And he inserted himself into the situation, is protecting Attorney General Eric Holder, is protecting this information, and to us it raises more questions. Why is he protecting what is obviously a criminal operation? And I think, and I don't know what the NRA's position on this is, but I think the Obama administration from day one came in with an anti-gun agenda that they wanted more gun control, they wanted to create this myth that Mexico, the, the violence along the border was because American guns were being shipped into Mexico. Right, and, and as you pointed out, almost from the beginning, there was a chorus of administration officials using the term 90% of firearms that were used in Mexican violence. 90% of firearms, they said, came from America. What they didn't tell us was that they were the ones sending them there through Operation Fast and Furious. And when that started to come through light, through the tragedies of Brian Terry's murder and through the hundreds of Mexican citizens who have been murdered through this violence, then they started backing off that. But not before they were using that 90% figure to justify their new regulatory schemes, their new registration requirements, and uh, forcing the federally licensed firearm dealers that are in the border states to, to go jump through more hoops and do more paperwork and do more requirements when they weren't the ones at fault. Yeah, now as a resident of Texas, if I want to go into a gun store and buy over a certain number of long guns, whether it be shotguns, hunting rifles, whatever kind of guns, there's extra paperwork that has to be involved, and that's that's an unequal protection issue, if you will. I'm treated differently as a resident of Texas than you would be as a resident of Virginia. Right, and you know, our concern is that that was just the beginning of what they were hoping to get out of this. You know, they uh, have been vocal, administration officials have been vocal, and President Obama, interestingly, before he was running for president, was very vocal about his desire to, to regulate gun ownership almost out of existence in America. And our concern is that they uh, engaged in this criminal operation for that end.
the Obama administration is famous for saying never let a crisis go to waste. But in this case, didn't they actually create the crisis so that they could leverage it to create the, to uh, extend their political agenda? Well, that's definitely what we're concerned about, and that's why we've been so persistent, and I know you've been persistent, and members of Congress have been persistent in asking for answers and asking for the truth. And you know, we think it's absolutely terrible, and it's it's compounding the tragedy that administration officials, uh, Eric Holder in particular, had to be held in contempt of Congress because he refused to tell the truth. You know, public servants should be honest with the American public, and you know, he's heading the Department of Justice, which is serving no justice to anyone right now. And you know, all of this is concerns, and this is why um, we may not get the answers under President Obama. There may need to be a new president in the next four years. Well, I certainly hope there is going to be a new president in the next four years. Um, I would like to encourage people to get involved with the NRA, to join the NRA. There's over four million American citizens yes. that are concerned about Second Amendment issues mm -hmm. that have already joined. How can people become involved with the NRA? Absolutely. Well, joining is easy. You can go online to nra.org. Uh, and there should be a membership tab um, on, the, on the, the left. If you go to NRAILA.org, which stands for the Institute for Legislative Action, on the uh, right-hand side of the page, there's a tab that says Get Involved Locally. And that's a place that people can go, put in where they live, and we can help them find uh, campaign field offices, NRA campaign field offices that are working on local elections and state elections. They can find their uh, uh, election campaign volunteers who has who have literature and yard signs and things like that uh, or a, a Second Amendment activism center in their area where they can go and get involved as well. Well Jacqueline the phrase you used was exactly right it's time for the American people to get furious and to get furious fast absolutely about this issue and about making a change in the White House absolutely and we hope everyone remembers to vote on November 6th thank you very much thank you